In this video, we're going to take a look at MIDI mapping and key mapping in Ableton Live. MIDI mapping is when we use MIDI controllers to control functions in Live. This can be completely customised, and this makes Ableton Live the most powerful and diverse DAW out there for live shows. Key mapping is very similar, however it's not for MIDI devices. Instead it's for mapping the computer keyboard. We can access the key map mode by pressing the key button in the top right of the screen, or we can use the keyboard shortcut Command and K. This will highlight any key mappable parameters in orange. We can now click on any parameter in live and then press a key to map it to that function. Let's map some clips and the transport controls to some keys. If we now look at device view, we can map some device parameters to some different keys. To come back out of key map mode, we simply press the key button again, or we just press command and K. Now we can use these buttons on our computer keyboard to control the parameters in Ableton Live. Notice that the buttons toggle between on and off. If any of your mapping buttons don't work, then remember to turn off your computer keyboard in the top right of the screen. Also, it's important to know that key mapping is case sensitive, so it gives you plenty more options for key mapping. One of the device parameters that we mapped earlier has a range of values. Currently, we can only toggle it between its highest and lowest setting. To change this, we need to go back into key map mode and then open the browser. Notice that in key map mode, the browser now shows us the key mappings. We can now change the maximum and minimum values that the key mapping will toggle between. We can also swap these values over to effectively invert the mapping. We can also change and delete mappings from the browser. The problem is we still can't change mappings by increments. This is where we can use MIDI mapping instead. Next we're going to take a look at MIDI mappings. To access MIDI map mode, press the MIDI button next to the key map button, or use the shortcut Command and M. This will highlight any parameters that can be MIDI mapped in blue. Firstly, we need to make sure that our MIDI device is set up in the MIDI preferences. So if we go to preferences, then the MIDI tab, and we need to make sure remote is selected on our MIDI controller or MIDI keyboard. This allows us to assign custom MIDI information. On my controller, I can now map the various knobs, faders and potentiometers to any control I want to in live. In this case, let's map some volume faders and effects. A point to note is that some of the MIDI controller knobs might not match the parameters in live. In the preferences, we can change the takeover mode to soft takeover. This means the knob won't change in live until it matches the exact position of the MIDI controller. Many new MIDI controllers now have endless encoders to eradicate this problem. Just like in key map mode, we can also edit the parameters in MIDI mode, as well as invert, delete, edit and override mappings. Now we'll show you how to map a third party plugin as well. For example, if we open an instance of Massive, we can click the arrow icon to unfold the device and see the mappings that are already on the device. If we'd like to map some more, we can do this by clicking on the spanner icon to show the plugin and then pressing the configure button in the device title bar. This now allows us to click any parameter in the plugin which will show in the device window. These parameters can now be mapped to the device's XY controller using the drop down menus underneath. We can now press Command and M to map these parameters from the device to our external MIDI controller. Many MIDI devices will be natively mapped in Ableton Live, which saves you from having to map generic MIDI functions yourself. To do this, go to Preferences, go to the MIDI tab, and then select your device from the Control Surfaces tab. If your device is in this list, then it supports the instant mappings. 